Hello, hardware hackers. I'm Troy Brown, and you're watching a great show for InfoSec neighbors, Hacker Warehouse TV. This episode, we're going to be hanging out with our friend Peter Esden-Timsky. Peter is the creator of the Blackmagic Probe version 2 and owner of 1-Bit Squared. We spent some time with him at DEF CON 24 to talk about how all the magic in the Blackmagic Probe works, its capabilities, and some advice for those who want to start getting their hands dirty in JTAG and hardware hacking. Check it out. My name is Piotr Zdentemski. Uh, I am the founder of One Bit Squared, and um, I'm here to um, be at the awesome DEF CON and meet a lot of interesting and cool uh, hackers and uh, try to uh, convince more to be hardware hackers. So I built uh, mostly out, uh, UAV autopilots, and uh, that is the core business. And uh, they are all open source, open hardware, open software. They are based based on the framework called Paparazzi UAV. And uh, beyond that, uh, I'm also working with uh, other hackers and uh, bringing their, um, their awesome inventions to market, making them into products and do assembly, production, and uh, we also have an online store that we sell through, but also have other partner companies that resell uh, our products. Uh, are you doing a, a talk here at DEF CON this year? Um, I did not come around to uh, submit a talk, but uh, I, um, we were um, giving a, a workshop uh, together with uh, Joe Fitz um, about uh, JTEC for fun and root shows. It's a very cool workshop. If you have a chance, uh, the workshops probably will be on other conver conferences too. It's a very cool uh, demo of what you can do if you actually use this quite ancient, but uh, it's still used very broadly JTEC interface that a lot of uh, devices, microcontrollers, and uh, actual CPUs uh, still expose. And it is a very interesting way of getting into systems. Uh, and uh, together with a um, friend of mine, Gareth McMullen from uh, Black Sphere Technologies, uh, who designed a very cool JTEC in, um, device. It's called Blackmagic Pro. And uh, Blackmagic Probe uh, is a self-contained uh, JTAG dongle that presents itself to the PC as a GDB server. So um, in many cases, when you have a, a JTAG interface you want to connect to, there is a very broadly used uh, software called OpenOCD. Uh, it is a um, bit difficult to set up uh, if you ever try to use it and, uh, and keep working. Uh, depends on the chip. The advantage of it is it supports a lot of different chips, but uh, uh, it has its issues. So Gareth uh, went ahead and implemented most of the logic that is inside OpenOCD uh, inside a microcontroller, an STM32 and uh, put it uh, on there and uh, added a USB to serial interface. So it's uh, just a virtual serial interface. So you can have a GDB uh, running for ARM chips and directly connect to the device uh, over a virtual serial port. And you don't have to use OpenOCD. It just does all the magic inside. What are some of the implications for you know, a use like this as far as consumers go? The main use case is to be able actually to debug the device you have. So a lot of people are familiar with uh, Raspberry Pis, uh, um, BeagleBone Blacks, or Arduinos for really small de devices. So especially in case of an Arduino, for example, there is no uh, way of actually being able to stop the program, step through the instructions, inspect the variables on the fly. Uh, the JTEC interface offers all that. It's like if you have a process on a Linux machine and you use GDB to debug that, you have all these like, cool things that you can do where you can actually look what the code is actually doing. For example, it crashes, you can stop it right there and see why did it crash. You can't do that on an Arduino, for example. So it, you can have to add some print statements and see where it fails, if you can even reproduce it again. So uh, with JTEC, you just plug it in, you stop the program, and see what is actually happening inside the chip. So it makes your um, software development much easier. And especially because the Blackmagic Probe is self-contained, it is not dependent on your setup on the PC that you just uh, are using or the Linux machine. And uh, if you have the right scripts and configuration files, it's like you just plug it in, you open the Arm Non-EAB GDB plugin, and you can, you, you can just go. Uh, 
know and see and fix your software. What what is it that in, in, inspires you? You know, when you when you're developing hardware or working with other people, like what are the projects that you know just get you going? Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. Um, uh, I think I, I love following the, the whole community, what people, other people are doing. Uh, this is giving a lot of ideas what to do, but also just using it yourself and like eating your own dog food is a very good way. It's like the ideas just flow in like really quickly. It's like my so-called to-do list is way longer than I can do in a in a reasonable time frame. It's like, I still have some lifetime left, so I hope I can get to every single item there. But uh, yeah, it's like they're just new flowing in all the time. So it's like, uh, just like it was with the autopilots uh, uh, side of things. It's like, I started with uh, the Lisa M and Lisa MX autopilots uh, for Paparazzi UAV. So basically what it was, Paparazzi, um, had a really great community of researchers and their own hardware. They uh, had like one company making the hardware for them, but uh, uh, I worked for a company that uh, needed autopilots that were a little bit more specific to their needs. So because it was all open source, I could start designing the hardware and I realized, well, other people also might use that and by create, like making them in more of them uh, bigger batches, it's like bigger batch for an open source project, it's like hundreds. It's like usually you buy the parts and you build two. And so uh, the problem for Paparazzi, which is a really great platform and it can actually do autonomous flight, it's a robotic flight platform, so it is built for that first and for uh, it, manual flight is just a side effect of, uh, of doing really robotic flight. Um, which a lot of other projects do it the other way around. Oh, we can fly it. Oh, actually we have a processor, so we can fly autonomously. Oh, so it is more of an afterthought in many cases. Not always, of course, but uh, Paparazzi, because it was meant for competitions, for UAV autonomous competitions, it is really focused on that. But it was a research community. They have no interest in making hardware. So uh, I realized it's like I can make hardware for them and I need it myself. So I eat my own dog food and help others by making hardware. So then I started with the black, uh, um, Lisa M and then I realized someone asked, it's like, can we make it really small and light? So I made the Lisa S. It's uh, so far, as far as I know, uh, it is still the smallest and lightest one. It's not very cheap because of the, how much I had to compress the size, but it's like two and a half grams. It's really tiny, so it's like, Currently, the, the really tiny uh, quadrocopters are very popular with the brushed motors, and you can mount it on there and make it into an autonomous UAV. And uh, um, this, is, this is really exciting. So um, the next idea was, oh, the other stuff was quite expensive, so I tried to make something more affordable. So I made the uh, Elo, so L0. This um, has everything on board. It's like very stripped down to the very bare essentials. And um, it is much more affordable than the other um, autopilots for paparazzi wear. It was, uh, I think, $80, so which is, which is more affordable. You just need a GPS on it, and it is also a fully autonomous system. It looks like any other uh, UAV autopilot. That's a that's little bit a problem for, from the, like, when people look at it, it's like, oh, it's another autopilot. No, it's actually meant for autonomous flight, you, and it has a very powerful processor on it. It's an F4, runs at 168 megahertz, it has uh, one megabyte of flash, and you can really put stuff on it and do, do business. And based on that, then the idea was, huh, well, I, for the Blackmagic probe, it is nice to have a target that is not specific to one application. So I took the parts that are just the, the business parts of an electronic system and made, uh, started making the one bit C. So the, this is how my ideas are flowing. It's like, I do one thing and I'm like, hmm, what, what next? And it's like, oh, this would be interesting. This is something someone asked if it would be possible. This would be useful for someone. So this is how it works. So if you were to talk to somebody who is you know, younger than you and just starting out, what would be your advice about how to get to a position like, like one that you're in? Uh, that's a very good question. So um, 
I was just yesterday talking to uh, someone like that, and it was very interesting to see he uh, he was uh, he's in college and he does software engineering or computer engineering, and he's like, yeah, I played around with an Arduino. It's like I don't really know what to do next, and um, so my advice is. Uh, Try to uh, actually, if you have already some hardware that you already have, it's like, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be, a, again, an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Try to set it up from scratch. So what I mean with that, the whole tool chain that you need to actually compile and run software on it, try to set it up yourself and not just take the package from the website and just just run it because they like to hide all the complexity which is great if you want to just get people from the street to start using electronics but if you if you actually are interested in hacking stuff if you are interested in how it works uh, setting it up yourself is uh, uh, you learn a lot from this so um, use the uh, in Arduino case, it's like use uh, uh, libavr, use uh, um, uh, uh, avr dude to actually upload the firmware over the ISP interface, or um, get a, um, um, an evaluation board that has a JTAG interface exposed. It's like there are some. There's like. Uh, um, a SAM uh, 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 part that you can buy from uh, uh, SparkFun, for example, and something that I'm actually working currently on that will be released later this year. It's um, uh, in the form factor of uh, the very popular Teensy, but um, and the Teensy doesn't have a JTAG interface exposed. So you can you can upload very easily, and it is compatible with the whole Arduino toolchain. Uh, you can also compile for it directly. This is something it's like if you have one, set up the tool chain yourself, try it out and see what is actually needed to make it work because then you are exposed to the nitty gritty and you start learning stuff about what's going on. And here it's like this is meant for exactly that. And uh, you have the JTEC interface so you can actually also debug it and look inside. What is the code doing? What is happening when you actually are setting up uh, uh, I2C or you are setting up some interface or USB? You can even step through the code and see, oh, so I step through this function, oh, the LED lights up and stuff like that. This is a very good way to get into it. So this is how I also started with uh, electronics. It's like someone else gave me some code that I had to add some features to and I had to like step through it and debug it and see what's going on. And then from there, I took the schematic. That's what why open source hardware is so great. Uh, you look into the schematic and you're like, okay, I need something that has this and this, this things change. You could basically take the device that you just bought like this and just plug it in into the board to make things simpler. But where you start actually like really learning what's happening and how these things work because you have to read the data sheets too, even though you have the schematic, you start building these things and make a PCB. Oshpark, for example, is, is a great, great way of uh, prototyping stuff. You have a PCB, you just go on the uh, Oshpark website, you put your Gerber files in there. It's like KiCad became uh, the open source uh, PCB layout tool, became really useful by now. It's like uh, CERN was very involved, so they they were uh, made it really usable by now. It's like I was using Eagle before and uh, just um, I think six months ago or a little bit longer than that, uh, KiCad became like past the threshold where it's like it is as usable as that if not better. So uh, just download it. You don't have any limitation as you have with Eagle with the free version. It's like your PCB can be any size. It ha can have as many layers as you want. You design it, you export it, or you take the KiCad files and upload it to Oshpark directly. They support that now. And you can get your PCBs, if you are in the US, like within, within two weeks. If it's a four layer board, if it's a two layer board, you get it within a week almost. It's really fast, it's really cheap, and it's all made in the US. And uh, and really high quality too. Is there a, a tool or a 
resource that you think is highly undervalued that you find yourself just going back to you wish more people would? Yeah, that's, it's like KiCat and GDB. It's GDB is actually very, um, because it's a, a command line tool and it has like a command line itself inside. People are thinking, it's like, oh, this is too complicated. It's incredibly powerful though. It's like, if you give it a shot and try it out, you will realize it is really, really awesome tool to actually get work done and uh, learn about things that you have. And you can use it even if you don't have the code on. So if you are hacking an ARM device, you can get the assembly just listed directly where you are and uh, see what's happening inside in assembly. And uh, with GDP, you can do that in Blackmagic Pro, for example. <laughs> That's a great example. So then, with that in mind, what is the next project for you? What are you working on in the future? That's a very good question. <laughs> so currently, I'm really deep, uh, deep. Uh, have my, uh, I'm re very concentrated on the one bit C uh, because I want to bring it to the market, and uh, I will probably be working more on the software side of things uh, next. It's like basically making a more of a framework for. Uh, Blackmagic Probe and 1BitC to make it easier, like uh, the, the threshold easier. It's like, so uh, it will probably be based on Atom, that is a very nice text editor that is open source and easy accessible and very modifiable. So to make an ID, I'm not a fan of Eclipse and Friends. So, um, so uh, it would be nicer to have something more lightweight that can do the same thing as Eclipse would. But uh, uh, but not Eclipse. <laughs> and um, similar with, uh, with Arduino, Arduino is limited. I heard that they are adding debugging features to it, but uh, also I heard that it is quite a big rewrite of the system because it not was, was not meant for that. So I will be probably working on that a little bit. Also shields for the 1BitC, like uh, audio shields, uh, DAC, uh, or uh, a foot pedal uh, case, or um, maybe for uh, uh, car hacking, a CAN, uh, because it has CAN interface uh, on it. So a car, uh, car uh, uh, ODB2 um, um, interface for it to do uh, car hacking stuff. Uh, I, there is many, many ideas. I don't know what which ones particular will be the first thing, but uh, if you come to our uh, Gitter uh, channel, it's uh, Gitter One Bit C, I think Lobby uh, or Lounge. I'm not exactly sure it is. Uh, and then you drop in and you uh, talk to me. It's like I'm there. I will answer your questions uh, or find me on uh, um, GitHub. Um, my nickname is Esten over there, so E S D E N and uh, just talk to me and uh, what are you what do you want to build with things it's like what do you uh, what is are your needs and i'm happy to hear that it's like if there's a few people very involved and very like oh yeah i would like to work on that it's like it's much more likely that i, I will be also working on that so yeah that's how it works if you are interested in this stuff just uh, contact me on uh, my uh, company website is onebitsquared.com. If you want a black magic probe, go to Hacker Warehouse, uh, get one for you yourself, and uh, I hope I hear from, from your audience. <laughs> Thanks again to our friend Peter Esden Timsky, creator of the Black Magic Probe version 2 from One Bit Squared. You can find all the links to both in the description of this video. If you have any questions about this segment, let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, might as well give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and associates. Once again, this is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and until next time, remember, keep it between the logs.